I recently read an article with a quote from Steve Vernella. The quote read as follows. I used to be endlessly troubled by meat-eating people who were uneasy with hunters and hunting. How can someone suggest that paying for the slaughter of animals is more justifiable than taking the responsibility for one's food into one's own hands? Civilization is a mechanism that allows us to avoid the necessary but ugly aspects of life. Most of us do not euthanize our own pets. We don't unplug the life support of our own ailing grandparents. We don't repair our own cars, and we don't process our own raw sewage. Instead, the delegations of our less pleasant responsibilities is so widespread that taking these things on is almost like trying to swim upriver. It's easier not to do them, and those who insist on doing so are bound to look a little odd. This season was an interesting one. Really, the weather wasn't very good. It was kind of the same day on repeat, just cold and breezy. And that breeze, it doesn't just strip you of your warmth, but it also can strip you of your hope. It just didn't feel very dreary. There wasn't those moments as the fog is lifting and silence comes over the forest and at any time something could come out. It's hard to hunt that way. I had to constantly remind myself that the deer ultimately don't care how I feel about them, and I didn't want to rob myself of the chance. This is where persistence and patience can really pay off. He was behind the bush thing for me. Ooh, that's loud. I wasn't, I'm not letting him get away. No, I may not even hit him. You saw what I shot. I'm like, oh god. I never saw him. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can spine him right here and he just died instantly. Sometimes I get asked, why do I film my hunts? Why create all that extra work and make the hunt more difficult than it really needs to be? And my answer typically is, well, it's a creative outlet. I enjoy storytelling and documenting and blending videography with hunting. And that's true. That really is the main reason that I do it all. But there are other reasons. Every once in a while you have a shot that's so amazing that if you were to just tell the story, I don't think anyone would believe you. They would think it's full of exaggeration and bent truth. That's where it's nice to have the cameras rolling. Let's go. I also hunt with my older brother. And older okay. brothers tend to tell the story a little differently. Lucky, lucky, lucky. That ain't luck. While one will claim luck, that ain't luck. The other will claim skill. You shot him in the spine, right? Yeah, that's right where I said. I said I hope I spied him and he dropped. Because the hill, I mean, right here, you don't have much. This trail sits like whatever that is, three foot down. So I knew I'd only be able to see the top of them or whatever, but... So this deer... He flew down the trail, the neighbor's trail, but all I could see is the shadow. He was behind the trees, but the sun is coming this way, so it casts this long shadow, and I could see legs moving, but that's all I could... And not his legs, just shadow of legs. And he pauses, and that's when I told you, I was like, it's got to be there, and I think he's just standing still, because it's not like... He never came into view. I had all these cameras rolling. 
and the deer wasn't even on camera yet. And so, as Noah's looking through it with binoculars, he's telling it's good, it's a buck, it's a good one. So we're hoping it comes down onto the property, but instead it takes a left. And this is, you can kind of see here, that's only about, it drops down three feet. I had lost myself in the scope. I couldn't figure out what was up, what was down. I didn't know if I was up on the road or down. And he just walks in and you guys will see it. You only get just a glimmer of antlers in the top of his back. And I knew, I was like, this is it. I'm either getting out of the stand and running after this deer to try to find him and get another shot, or I gotta take this one right now. So I shot the only spot I had in a quick point, which was kind of his back, and I thought maybe it'll drop him. And so it looks like right, right there is where I got him, right at the top, which was the only part of him I could see other than his antlers. Well guys, that wraps up the season and this is really the end of an era for me. This was my last hunt on this property. Years ago, my aunt and uncle were kind enough to allow me to make these woods my own and I am thankful for every minute that I got to spend out there. I've made so many memories and I can't imagine a better way to wrap the whole thing up. So I want to say thank you again to my Aunt Penny, and thank you Uncle John. Until next time.